soak in the information that we're about to uh, dig out of this convo here. Let me get a formal YouTube intro out of the way, and then we will get going. Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you are doing well. And uh, today we're about to embark on an exclusive interview and conversation with the one and only Cryolot, aka Sarah Benito, or I don't know if like one's in front of the other yet. I mean, you're kind of like, you know, rocking both right now, uh, but especially the Cryolot name, since that is uh, what is attached to this new EP that you're about to drop uh, tonight. Uh, in this new conversation, I was hoping to just get some more information on this new handful of tracks and just what you're hoping to do with this new project. Uh, but off the bat, Sarah, thanks for coming through. How are you doing? Yeah, feeling super excited. Like we're mm -hmm. finally at the finishing line. Um, EP's coming out tomorrow. It's it's been yeah, feeling pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. So you know, let me start to dig into some of the initial stuff about this project. Like, you know, at at what point did you start getting like this inkling of, because everybody already kind of knows you for that Caro Carabinito creative outlet. You know what I mean? At what point did you start to get this inkling of like, I have kind of like a solo idea here, you know, kind of that I really want to explore either because I want to try that route. I feel like I need full control of this, or maybe this story, this idea is a bit personal to me and I feel like it needs to come purely through me. Like w when did you kind of get these, you know, feelings and, and where, you know, like what exactly kind of drove them to begin with? Yeah, um, definitely. It's been like a journey. Um, like, I guess I can start with how the cry lot project like started. It like initially started off like I would say around like 2018 mm. um, and uh, I opened an Instagram account um, and um, I was like kind of going through like a dark period in my life and I kind of it started off by kind of like making a space for myself to kind of post stuff or like do something from it um, that maybe won't go on Sarah Bonito or my other like Instagram accounts mm. and then when I got to like naming the account, I was like, what do I name this? And I was like, I was crying a lot. So I was like, screw it, cry a lot. So I was like, I kind of wanted to be like, like a place of like, I guess it, it is, it always was kind of like a bit darker, but it was almost like a way of like hope of like, kind of like taking back control of that dark moments and kind of trying to make something creative out of it and mm. kind of not let like the tears become just like tears, like kind of changing that into something like a creative project. So that was my initial like kind of attempt at it. Uh, I mean, uh, my initial like thought of it. And then I kind of was like posting stuff. And then I started DJing um, under DJ Cry a lot on that account. And then um, um, when uh, I was touring in around that time um i met jennifer walton who was a live member of kkb hmm. and we were kind of like spending 24 7 together and i kind of like like felt like i i don't know it's hard to say why i got asked so like so many times like why did you want to work with jenny and it just i think like the most closest answer i can say is like it just felt right like i really liked her solo music there's like this kind of like darkness i really was like attracted to and then like when i met jenny and like when we were spending time together on tour during 2018 to 2020 hmm. that's when i was like okay let's make music together under this under the crowd project and yeah that's how it all started <laughs> you know would it be fair to say like this outlet in this project is kind of like a natural occurrence of you you, you needing like a secondary sort of place for maybe some of these emotions to go because like cara cara benito you know, the music that that project comes out with is consciously so upbeat or maybe like whimsical or sort of bright and positive in a way very consistently. Not to say that the band has never come out with a song that is maybe a bit sad or a bit emotional, but, you know, a, a lot of the output there doesn't tend to go as dark as like some of the stuff that you've done here. Um, I don't really think of it like that, like, oh, it's because of KKB. I think like I'm always like been a person who loves kind of creating new 
things like I always love putting my hands in loads of things like I counted the other day how many Instagram accounts I like manage and it's like seven accounts <laughs> so it's wait, like, wait are, are all of them public do you have like a bunch of burner accounts there are burner accounts but like the ones I can like tell you is obviously like KKB Sarah yeah. Bernita cry a lot my art account uh -huh. the food account got it and like um and oh, what's the other one but yeah there, there's loads so it's like i think like i don't know i've always been a person who wants to like i don't know like what's the word not kind of like do loads of things in one go i don't know i like doing loads of different things so i guess like it kind of just felt right to like open this account and like post more kind of like I don't know, like tears, or like dark period related things, I guess. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's how it is. So, you and Jenny getting together and, and, you know, starting to work on music together, that was kind of the beginnings of a lot of the songs that we're hearing on this new EP? Yeah, for sure. Like, because um, I guess, like, um, like the, the theme I'm like exploring on this EP, Icarus, is something mm -hmm. I always wanted to explore, but I wasn't like I didn't not I wasn't sure like how like it could have been a painting, it could have been I don't know like a, a story or a film, like. But I guess like when I met Jenny, it, like her music felt perfect for what I wanted to go for. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah, that's when I was like yeah, music. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a music thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got it. Um, you know, I, I know that you learned about this story in school and it's kind of been hanging with you ever since then. Like, w you know, what exactly would you say draws you so much to this story? Is it the abstract concept of it? Are there elements of it that you personally identify with? Like, what kind of keeps it sticking with you to the point where you want to make something in, you know, uh, you know, make an homage to it in a way? Yeah, I mean, like, the Icarus story is, like, my personal, like, obsession. Mm. Like, I guess, like, every time someone wants me to write a song, I always tend to, like, I kind of naturally, like, um, want to write a song about that. So then, mm. like, recently I realized, oh, it's because I, I, like, even to this day, since I, like, found out about this story when I was seven, I'm, like, it's still, like, um, like, really, like, affected me. And I guess, like... Like the, yeah, the first time I found out about the mythology was through this song, but this song was like, not like, I guess like the most common interpretation of the Icarus mythology is like a, like a cautionary tale, like don't fly too close to the sun or you're going to die. And like, like, um, don't do, don't do that. Um, but this song was like, um, it was more like talking about the courage of Icarus of like that moment of like, when you're like, when you become more than human like and and so the first time I got to know this mythology was was that interpretation and it kind of really resonated with me and then when I got older and older like I realized like oh it's not really a common interpretation and I think like and I'm always kind of like and I think it the mythology has become kind of like this philosophy of life I always try to aspire to like kind of like that moment and I think we all have that of like trying to become like um something more and it's not really about like failing or like success it's really like just trying to be something more is powerful in itself and that's what I wanted the EP to like like talk about like explore and like my attempt at like rewriting the mythology interpretation yeah <laughs> Do you personally think that just in your profession of creating and there obviously being like, you know, a fame, a notoriety element to that just in your own personal life that due to that, you have like these personal parallels to that story that you're kind of like living out every day, every time you decide to make a song or come out with a new project or go out on a tour or something like that? Yeah, I guess like with like what I do you're kind of like always have to like carve your way yourself so you're always kind of like making loads of decisions like what to do and like I don't know so yeah there is that element but I, I'm not like trying to say like I am the example I'm kind of more like I'm like trying to aspire aspire to that kind of philosophy and it's it's really like I don't know why I'm attracted to that like it's very like yeah, it's. A, I think it's like a story that I, 
I really like resonate with. Yeah. And and when you say, you know, sort of like aspire to that, it's you mean sort of like that fearlessness of like flying into the sun without any sort of like question or anything like that? Yeah, I guess that's kind of like I, when people use it as a cautionary tale, it's like don't fly too high or too low, just like fly in the middle and it will be fine. But then it's kind of like, what is life when you're just always flying safely in the middle? I think like what makes like living life beautiful is that we we do kind of like, like I think everyone comes to this like, I, everyone has these moments when it's like do or die. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I think it's, I'm like really attracted to that, like, like that power people have, mm. like, and I guess it's not just me. Like I love surrounding myself with people like that as well, especially mm-hmm. like, like creative people who like, I feel like, yeah. yeah. I, I feel, I feel like there's a different, there's a couple of different ways that you could feel attached to that, you know, ideology or that philosophy. And, you know, you tell me which one you feel, do you, do you feel attached to it? Yeah. I, I think you've said it in so many words, but to like make it a bit clear, do you feel attached to it because you feel like you have a natural tendency to be that way? Or do you feel attached to it because you have to maybe sometimes remind yourself like, no, I should go for it. I should like, you know, this is a do or die moment. I shouldn't hesitate. Oh, uh, I think it's, uh, if it's, Put me personally, I think I've both. I've always kind of been like this person where like I always kind of go with the f- I always try to like not listen. I guess like when you try something new, you always have that voice in the back of your head, like, don't do it, it's very risky, you might fail. What if you fail? So I'm kind of like try to not listen to that. And I think it, it does like affect how I like live my life as well. Like, I guess like 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 I don't know if this is a good example, but when I joined KKB, I never actually sang on stage in my life before. Um, and like, and everything, like, and everything was like really new to me. Like, and then it's kind of like, it's, yeah, I kind of just wrote the flow. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you about some of the newer sounds that you guys explored on this EP, specifically on the track Hell is Here, which is like, you know, quite, quite metal. You know, honestly, like as far as like the vocal and the production and just kind of the general like presentation of like the the distortion, the heaviness of this track, like what was the creative process of this song like? And, you know, did you have like these these genre fusions in mind before going into it when you made it? Yeah, um, I guess like with with Hell is Here was the first song I wrote. And that was literally when I was in the midst of the, the dark period. And um, it, it like when looking back at it, it almost feels like almost like this like diary entry to that to that moment. And I guess like around that time, I was going through like a lot of ups and downs. Like um, I guess when you go feeling down, like some seconds you feel like you're out of it, but then you're back into like the I don't know the 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 dungeon in your head or whatever um so I wanted the song to kind of reflect that kind of like there's that heavy like chorus and then it goes into like a pretty like verse and then it's almost kind of like heaven and hell kind of vibe and I wanted I wanted the song to kind of reflect that kind of experience I had yeah Mm -hmm. and you know the closing track uh which I thought was pretty interesting narratively because it it seemed like there was almost an acknowledgement of, <clears throat> I don't know what, there being like a repetition to this story or it kind of like continues on or we're kind of going back to the beginning in a way. Like, you know, what were you trying to get to, especially with this EP being so short? You've kind of like compacted this narrative into like a very short series of tracks. Like, you know, what exactly were you trying to get at thematically with kind of maybe ending things off in a way at the beginning, you know, and kind of like taking it all back to the start? Yeah, I think like that song is kind of my response of people saying like, don't fly too close to the sun or you'll fall and drown. But I'm kind of like, yeah, like Icarus, maybe he did die. Uh, um, He did die. But is this actually the end? We still remember him like he's kind of immortalized through like stories like and it's kind of like by making the song like repetitive and kind of like long, it was kind of my way of like actually not ending it it kind of feels like it's 
it's still going on and yeah i kind of wanted to like reflect that in that song mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh you know for as, as far as this project is standing currently and obviously like i i feel like we're, we're just kind of starting to get to know it because the ep is just about to come out it's not out as of the moment as we're talking right now but it will be out in a matter of hours um <clears throat> You know, once this is out, what do you feel like is your next creative focus? Because, you know, uh, it's it's a handful of songs. We're still yet to see how people will react to them. It, you know, are we kind of sitting here and waiting and seeing what exactly that reception is? And then if it's positive, we move forward and make more cry a lot. Do we go back to KKB? Is there a tour, some kind of series of performances that we could be looking for from either one project or the other soon? Yeah, I mean, I feel like like working on this like um project I really like enjoyed writing with Jenny and feel like there's a new door that's opened I definitely want to like explore more in the future but that that doesn't mean I'm like leaving KKB or anything KKB's still going and like everything's like happening so it's kind of like yeah I guess I always see as like there's a new new door now and I'm I'm gonna go through that (laughs) yeah and, uh, you know, also you've kind of gone in a little bit with this project on the music video end as well. Um, you know, was there anything that you sort of had in mind or that you had to take account of when sort of like embodying, you know, these tracks in a music video when you're like, I have a certain kind of visual or aesthetic or presentation in mind for Cry A Lot that works specifically for this project? Like, you know, what were some of those ideas and concepts that you came together with to kind of give maybe this like a different visual angle than anything else you've done before? Yeah, like, I guess, like, with the visual stuff, I'm super, like, serious about the visual stuff. I see it as, like, as important as the music, um, especially, like, the way I listen to music. Um, I, I kind of listen, I don't really use Spotify. I listen to music through YouTube, not YouTube music, but YouTube. Like, I'm a really visual person. So every song needs to have a visual. So I'm, like, even from the start, I'm, like, even if it's an EP, I'm like, every th- song is going to have a visual. Like, I don't care what people say. And then it's kind of like, like, I guess like this, um, I teamed up but with the video, um, like Hell is Here and Labyrinth. Like I teamed up with uh, director Josh Homo, who directed Only Acting, because I thought like he'll be really perfect and to like kind of explore like the darker aspects of this project and I was like really interested in like I love like found footage like horror or like this kind of like more kind of like stripped back kind of like visuals I really like it feels real so I kind of definitely wanted to like implement that and also like I I've made like uh, me and my mom made these like wings that appear in like music videos and like the touch the sun cover um, they're all like handmade from like things found around like in everyday life and I I was really like um um I was feeling like because I guess like when you think of wings you kind of think of like angel wings but for this project I really wanted to make wings that looks like it can't you can't use it to fly like something like an Icar- something an Icarus would bring wing like something very like fragile looking so yeah, there is a lot of like thought and like lots of me in scattered in the visual side for sure. Also, uh, you know, just to kind of get a, a an idea of this here, like what made you because it is such a big story and obviously you do have like a lot of passion for it. And it does seem to resonate with you quite deeply. Like, you know, what between you and Jenny made you decide that the for, you know, for this like first project size go that we go for like an EP as opposed to an album or something like larger uh that's odd because I I could write like a million songs about this topic I know I I, kind of get the sense of that like we could we could get an Icarus part two or something like like we could get a sequel I don't know yeah 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 like if you if you let me do whatever it'll just be like Icarus the sixth album or something I don't know but yeah I guess we just we just had to stop at some point and when we stopped 
because uh when we stopped it was five songs and it's like oh well it's like an ep so let's do an ep like it could have been an album if we kept going right yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> and you know generally what would you say like you know uh, because the, the way that you talk about working with Jenny, it seems like it was a really positive experience. Like how did, you know, that process maybe differ positively or maybe even negatively from any other kind of record or project that you've worked on before? Uh, I guess like, um, I guess like the fact that me and Jenny were spending so many, um, like hours, or like days together on tour um when I was going through the dark moments like kind of like uh, like and we weren't even talking about making music kind of really like helped in a way like I don't know I, I get really tensed up when I have to work with people I don't know or like like do sessions with people I don't know it's like I feel like writing music for me is like a very like you have to open up your heart to someone and so I, I tend to like gravitate to people like I feel comfortable with and it just like it just felt right like we had like me and Jenny we had this like foundation even before we went into the studio together so yeah like it just felt right to do it with her I guess yeah mm -hmm. and you know as far as like the composition and project and production end like you know did that process differ much in terms of you know your uh, involvement and input on that and sort of like your fingerprint on that as opposed to like any KKB record, uh, you know, given that you're talking about there being less people involved, were you able to take the reins on that more? Uh, with like the the production or like the tracks, I kind of let Jenny like do whatever felt right for her. Mm -hmm. Like um, I didn't really like, um, I just kind of like told her like, I just like sent her I, I like sent her like the ideas I had or like the lyrics or like some kind of like I don't know stuff I really wanted to like go for but other than that I didn't really like I just kind of let her do whatever she felt right for it yeah okay and uh you know I, I guess uh to uh, you know leave things off if you kind of want to you know let us uh have any insight into this like now that this is done do you have any immediate kind of with the dreaming big Icarus, you know, concepts in mind, do you have any sort of like, you know, grand visions for this project kind of going forward from here that you're hoping to kind of, you know, launch off into once this is out? Um, yeah, I actually have something, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I want that to be a surprise, but I have a, a new obsession. <laughs> um, but <laughs> so like, yeah, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, new new obsessions are good. New obsessions are good. Uh, they'll, they'll they'll lead to more uh, uh, inspiration. What shirt are you wearing right now? Oh, um, it says it's like it says immortal. Uh huh. And it's like a nice. Shell. It's sick. Um, it's sick. Brand is like Mary Wyatt. I don't know. Just, okay. Yeah. All right. Well. Uh, I like it. <laughs> no, it's good. It's sick. All right. Um, listen, uh, I appreciate you coming through and being an open book and uh, telling us everything about the EP. Uh, hope you're doing well. And, you know, thank you for taking the time. No, thank you very much for having me. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Have a good rest of your day. You too. All right. Bye.